You've probably heard a lot about memory in computer science, and one of the most common types is RAM, or Random Access Memory. RAM is crucial because it stores and provides quick access to data that your applications need while they're running. For example, when you open a browser or a Word document, the system loads these applications into RAM for faster access. If you reopen them soon after, they load faster because they're still in RAM. However, when RAM fills up, your computer slows down. This concept of memory management is similar to how Java memory works. Just like your computer's RAM stores data for applications, Java memory stores everything your Java application needs to run smoothly. This includes objects, primitive values, constants, fields, method codes, and metadata. Essentially, Java memory holds all the data and instructions your application needs. The Java Virtual Machine, JVM, manages this memory, and understanding how it works is key to optimizing your Java applications. Understanding Java memory is crucial for any Java developer and offers several key benefits. First, it helps you visualize object composition more clearly. For instance, if you have a person class that contains an address class as a property, knowing how these objects interact in memory can make it easier to understand how to access and manipulate data fields. It also clarifies concepts like static versus instance methods and the this keyword. Grasping how Java memory works provides a clearer picture of these concepts, which can otherwise be confusing. Another advantage is a better understanding of pass by value, and pass by reference. Once you're familiar with Java memory, these concepts become much more intuitive. This knowledge also aids in understanding object mutability and immutability. Moreover, complex topics like concurrency become easier to tackle. As a Java developer, you'll eventually work with concurrency, and knowing how Java manages memory can simplify understanding data access and synchronization issues. Garbage collection is another critical area where understanding memory helps. We'll dive into this in detail in the final chapter of this course, but having a solid grasp of Java memory beforehand will make this topic more approachable. Lastly, knowing how Java memory works clears up many everyday concepts, such as the difference between primitive types and wrapper classes. If you're eager to dive into memory management, We'll start by exploring the basics of stack and heap memory in the upcoming chapters. The Java Virtual Machine, JVM, plays a crucial role in managing Java memory. Without the JVM's memory management, Java objects couldn't be stored properly because there would be no allocated memory. And even if objects were allocated, they wouldn't be cleaned up, leading to potential memory overflow. In essence, memory management is vital for running Java applications. The JVM, which stands for Java Virtual Machine, is the environment that executes Java code. It can also execute other types of code, but its primary function is to handle Java. One of the key features of the JVM is that it makes Java platform independent. Each system has its own JVM, that ensures Java code runs the same way across different platforms. Think of the JVM as a universal travel plug for your Java applications. Just like a travel plug allows you to use your devices anywhere, the JVM allows Java code to run everywhere. When the JVM starts, it reserves a chunk of RAM for the Java application known as the heap. The JVM manages various types of memory, including the class area, heap, stack, program counter register, and native stack memory. In this course, we'll focus primarily on the heap and stack memory. One of the JVM's key responsibilities is managing memory allocation and deallocation. The heap memory is managed by the JVM's garbage collection process, which we'll dive deeper into later. For now, let's start by understanding stack memory. Stack memory is crucial for executing methods in Java. When a method is called, 
A block of memory is allocated on the stack specifically for that method. This memory block holds the primitive values directly, but objects are handled a bit differently. Instead of storing the actual objects on the stack, only the references to these objects are stored. These references point to the object's locations in the heap. The stack organizes memory into blocks for each method. When a method is executed, its block is created on top of the stack. If this method calls another method, a new block is pushed onto the stack for the new method, containing its own values and references. Once the method finishes executing, its memory block is removed, and the stack reverts to the previous state, allowing access to the previous method's memory block. Here's a quick visualization. Imagine you have method 1, which contains its own set of values and references. When method 1 calls method 2, a new block is created on the stack for method 2. If method 2 calls method 3, another block is added for method 3. When method 3 completes, its block is removed and you return to method 2. Once method 2 finishes, you return to method 1. Eventually, when all methods are done, the stack is empty again. A key thing to remember is that while a method is active, you can only access its stack memory. Once the method completes, its memory is cleared and no longer accessible. This automatic management helps keep memory organized and efficient during program execution. Heap memory is where all the objects in your Java application are stored. Unlike stack memory, objects on the heap can be accessed from anywhere in the application using their references, which are basically the addresses where these objects are located. Each object in the heap contains its own primitive values and references to other objects on the heap. To visualize how this works, imagine you have several objects stored in the heap. For example, object 1 might hold some primitives and references to other objects, like object 2 and object 3. Each of these objects can reference others, creating a network of objects. Here's a simplified view. Object 1 references Object 2, and Object 2 might reference Object 3. When Method 1 is active, it references Object 1 and Object 2. Meanwhile, Method 2, which is a different stack block, references Object 3. One key difference between stack and heap memory is how they are managed. When Method 2 finishes executing, its stack memory is cleaned up automatically. However, the heap doesn't get cleaned up in the same way. If object 3 is no longer referenced by any active stack frame or other objects, it becomes eligible for garbage collection. This means that while object 3 might be cleaned up eventually, it's not guaranteed until the garbage collector runs. Similarly, when method 1 completes, if object 1 and object 2 are no longer needed, they too can be removed by the garbage collector. Once your application ends, both the stack and heap are cleaned up, clearing all memory. Understanding how heap memory works is essential for managing object life cycles and optimizing memory usage in your Java applications. Stack versus heap memory. When it comes to Java memory, the stack and heap serve different purposes and have distinct characteristics. Stack memory. The stack is used for method execution and holds primitive values and references. Access to stack memory follows a last-in, first-out, LIFO principle. Only the top block of memory can be accessed at any time. Stack memory is relatively small and automatically deallocated when methods complete. It's faster to access stack memory compared to heap memory. The lifetime of stack memory is limited to the duration of method execution. Heap memory. The heap stores all objects created during the application's runtime. Objects on the heap can be accessed from anywhere in the application using their references. Heap memory is larger than stack memory and is managed by the garbage collector, which deallocates memory when objects are no longer in use. Accessing heap memory is slower compared to stack memory. Heap memory exists for the duration of the application, 
making its lifetime longer than stack memory. Let's look at a code example to illustrate these concepts. Stack and heap in action. In stack memory, you'll have primitives like integers and booleans, while heap memory holds objects. For instance, if you create a person object and an address object, the stack will store references to these objects, and the actual data resides on the heap. Modifying heap objects. If you modify the address object by calling setter methods, you're changing data in the heap. For example, setting the city name to Utrecht involves creating a new string object on the heap. Connecting objects. You can link objects on the heap. For example, a person object can reference an address object. The reference stored in the person object points to the location of the address object on the heap. Errors related to memory. Stack overflow error. This occurs when the stack runs out of space due to excessive method calls or recursion. For instance, a recursive method that continually calls itself can quickly fill up the stack, leading to this error. Out of memory error. This happens when the heap is exhausted, often due to creating too many objects. For example, an infinite loop that continuously adds entries to a map will eventually cause the heap to run out of space. Understanding these differences and how to manage stack and heap memory will help you write more efficient Java code and avoid common pitfalls. Primitives in Java. Primitives are the most basic data types in Java. They consist of just three things, a name, a type, and a value. In terms of memory management, stack memory. Primitives used in methods are stored here. This memory is temporary and managed automatically as methods are executed. Heap memory. When primitives are part of an object, they are stored on the heap as part of the object. Java has eight primitive types. Int for whole numbers. Byte for smaller whole numbers. Short for numbers larger than byte, but smaller than int. Long for larger whole numbers. Float for decimal numbers with single precision. Double, for decimal numbers with double precision. Boolean, for true, false values. Char, for single characters represented as unsigned integers between zero and 65,535. Primitives versus wrapper classes. Primitives stored on the stack and are generally faster to access. Wrapper classes, classes like integer, double, and character that wrap primitive types and are stored on the heap. They start with a capital letter and are slower to access than primitives due to heap storage. Key differences and considerations. Speed. Accessing primitives on the stack is faster than accessing objects on the heap. Collections. Java collections can only store objects, so primitives need to be wrapped in their corresponding wrapper classes when used in collections. Example, consider a class methods with three methods. Each method has its own stack memory block. Primitive values like int x and boolean y are stored on the stack. If a method modifies a primitive value, such as changing x from zero to two, this change only affects the local copy of x in that method's stack block. This behavior is known as pass by value. Only the value is passed not the reference. In performance-sensitive scenarios where you need to access many values quickly, primitives are preferable due to their faster access times. However, for operations involving collections, you'll need to use wrapper classes as collections cannot hold primitives. In the next video, we'll dive into objects, where their data is stored, and how they are managed in memory. Understanding Java Objects Objects in Java are collections of values and are fundamentally different from primitives. They are stored in heap memory, while references to these objects are kept on the stack. This reference is known as the object reference. How objects are managed, heap memory, stores the actual objects. This includes primitive values and references to other objects. Stack memory stores references to objects on the heap. 
Without these references, we wouldn't be able to access the objects on the heap. Java provides numerous built-in objects, such as ArrayList, the various wrapper classes, e integer, doubler, string, thread, and many more. You can also create your own objects, which will also be stored on the heap. Hey everyone, it's Mina here from Avebron Tech. If you're enjoying this video and finding our content helpful, there's a simple way you can support us and stay updated with all our latest videos. Please press the subscribe button below and don't forget to click the bell icon next to the subscribe button. This way, you'll get notified every time we upload a new video so you never miss out on any tips, tutorials, or tech insights. If you found this video useful, give it a thumbs up. Your likes help us understand what content you enjoy and want to see more of. We'd also love to hear from you. Drop a comment below with your thoughts, questions, or suggestions for future videos. Your feedback is incredibly valuable and helps us create better content tailored to your needs. Thank you so much for your support. Together, we can grow this channel and continue to bring you the best tech content out there. Remember, Subscribe, hit the bell, like, and comment. I can't wait to read your comments and see you in the next video.